Let's go back to the phone lines, talk to uh, Brian listening in Virginia. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brother Hank. It's an honor to talk to you, and thank you so much for taking my call. You got it. Uh, I've got a, uh, I'm sure it's a common question uh, to you, but I'm a relatively a new listener, and uh, it's a deep question, but I'll try and ask as, as simply as I can. Uh, and I understand that not all biblical questions we have the answers to, but I, I'd like to try and get a better grasp uh, of this particular subject, um, we know in, of course, in, in uh, from Psalm 19 uh, that, that God's handiwork is is seen through creation, uh, through nature, uh, and of course we know from from Romans 1 uh, that no man will have an excuse uh, of the knowledge of God just based on what we see through nature. Uh, however, when Jesus says that that no man comes to the Father but by me. Uh, in regards to you know these these uh, tribes in the deepest jungles, um, of course we know uh, that they have no excuse based on what they see. However, people that never receive the gospel of Christ, uh, if they do acknowledge God or that there is a Creator, however, never hear the gospel. Uh, in your opinion, does God allow? Uh, some, for lack of a better word, exemptions when it comes to salvation based on knowledge that people have received. Yeah, well, my opinion isn't what matters. It's what the Bible says. And one of the things that the Bible makes clear in this regard is, as Paul proclaimed on Mars Hill, from one man God made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. He determines the exact time and places that they should live and did that so that men might reach out for him and find him though he's not far from each one of us. And you add to this the fact that Jesus talking to Nicodemus said, light came into darkness, men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, which is to say the real problem is not that there's not enough light, the real problem is that men love darkness rather than light. And you are correct in starting with Romans chapter 1, but we can also go to Romans chapter 2 and demonstrate that not only do we have a light from without, the creation calling forth that there's a God, but we have a light from within, our conscience making clear to us that there is a God. And if we respond to the light from without and the light from within, we are told in Romans chapter 3 that we will receive the light of Christ. Now the normative way that that happens is uh, through one person telling another person where they found the water of life or the bread of life. Uh, but that's not the only way it can happen. It can happen supernaturally. Uh, just as uh, Saul was accosted on the road to Damascus supernaturally, and his name became Paul, uh, the apostle of the Gentiles, God can reach someone supernaturally, whether by a vision or a dream or in some other way. And then further add to that the fact that it's not the absence of truth that damns, it's the despising of truth that damns. It's not as though God is trying to find some technicality uh, to keep you out of eternity or keep you out of a relationship with Him. He was willing to suffer more than any man, more than the cumulative sufferings of all of humankind, so that we can be uh, reconciled to Him not only for time, but also for eternity. And th that included laying prostrate in the pool of His own blood before His creation. So again, he's not looking for a technicality uh, to keep us out of relationship with him. He did everything that we might be reconciled to him. Uh, so we can be absolutely certain in the greatest size when we are standing with people from every tongue and tribe and, uh, and nation that, that, that God is not going to say, well, you know, you didn't know how to pronounce this name correctly or you didn't know how to codify this truth in the most pristine way. You didn't have the formula down or the linguistics down right. No, uh, that's not the point. Those who genuinely seek for God with their whole heart will find Him and therefore will be reconciled to Him for time and for eternity. I want to take this one step farther. And that is, think about the Old Testament people. The Old Testament people had a whole lot less light than we do. They still had the light of creation and the light of conscience, but they only saw towards Christ in terms of types and shadows. We can look back at the cross. Christ has come. They looked forward through types and shadows. Uh, and yet, we know that Abraham was saved as we are saved because he looked forward to the promise, even though he didn't see it as clearly as you and I see it. 
Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you, you helping me understand that a little better, and, and, and God bless your ministry. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your call. And, you know, I've written about things like this in the Complete Bible Answer Book Collector's Edition. do want to mention that for a gift of $100 or more to the ongoing work of the Christian Research Institute, I'll send you a personalized copy of the Complete Bible Answer Book Collector's Edition or... Uh, my recently released book, Has God Spoken? Memorable Proofs for the Divine Inspiration of Scripture. Again, personalized for your gift of $100 or more to the ongoing work of the Christian Research Institute. And we need many of you to join the monthly Bible Answer Man support team. It just makes a huge difference in touching the lives of people for time and for eternity.